everyone, I'm Brock with PDQ. Today we are taking a look at one of my favorite topics, how to update PowerShell. Now, you might be wondering why that's one of my favorite topics is because we've got a lot of options to talk about. There are several different ways to update PowerShell. So let's dive in and get started because this one might get a little long. I'm gonna show you a lot of uh, different variations of how you can get the job done. Some of them better than others. So we're gonna dive over here to our computer screen. Uh, we've actually got our blog pulled up here and if you prefer the written word, uh, definitely head over to pdq.com slash blog. You'll find our how to update PowerShell guide over there. First off, I gotta make this clear. There are kind of two flavors of PowerShell out there. Thanks, Microsoft. We've got Windows PowerShell and Windows PowerShell Shell is kind of the OG. It comes with, it comes pre-installed on Windows. It comes pre-installed on Windows 10, 11, comes pre-installed on Windows Server. Because it's pre-installed on these devices, it's definitely the most prevalent version of PowerShell out there. It's built off of .NET Framework, but the downside to Windows PowerShell is that it's not in active development, so no new features are coming to Windows PowerShell. Uh, how it is right now, which is PowerShell, Windows PowerShell 5.1. That's how it's staying. No new features are getting added. So we are gonna be taking a look at just PowerShell. Just PowerShell, uh, formerly known as PowerShell Core, which is built off .NET, formerly .NET Core. You know, I think Microsoft honestly like has to change a product name every once in a while or their share prices drop. Anyway, so we are actually talking about just PowerShell. So we're currently in PowerShell version 7. Dot, I think at the time of this video, we're looking at 7.4.4. Now PowerShell is great. It's uh, multi-platform, it's open source. And again, it's actively being developed. Tons of resources are put behind PowerShell to uh, make it better every single day. So lots of updates coming for that. Now let's go ahead and look at the various options we have to update PowerShell. If we scroll down here, We'll see, this is where we can find our MSIs. We can go to GitHub or Microsoft's website. If we pull up the GitHub page, just make sure, you can see right here what release we're on. Just make sure if you scroll down here, you're wanting to look for the assets. If you come down here looking for a particular MSI for you know the Windows installer, you're gonna actually wanna make sure you hit show all 31 assets. And then you'll have you know, your ARM options and your Win X64 MSI. These are probably what you're looking for. Uh, or you can go to the Microsoft website itself, pull that up and you'll see right here, MSI package, that link will take you directly to the download that you need. Now we're actually gonna go through this download. I'm gonna pull up a virtual machine here. So I'm already on the Microsoft website. We are going to click on MSI package cause that's the one we want. Click on that, that should automatically download for us into our downloads folder which I've got pulled up right here. We've got our download. Now let's go through this thing a little bit here. This computer does not have PowerShell 7 on it. So we're gonna go through this setup. Click next, click next. Now you got a lot of options here. Honestly, I think all of these options are good. So, I mean, you could just go through and enable every single one of these, but again, up, totally up to you. You don't have to do that. Click next. Now this one's kind of important. So since we're talking about updating PowerShell, this one kind of like, can configure it for you right from the installer itself. You'll see here, it's like, hey, we can actually update PowerShell through Microsoft updates. Well, cool, if we enable those, it's gonna do that. And I'll show you how it does that. If we go to Windows Update Settings, search for that in the search bar, pull up the Windows Update app, and then we're gonna come to Advanced Options. You'll see that receive updates for other Microsoft products when updates, or when you update Windows, that's currently turned off, okay? Now you could come in here, manually turn that on. It's gonna start automatically updating those apps for you. But if we actually go through here, as long as we have both of these checked and we go next and we install this, this is actually gonna configure that setting for you to make sure you're kind of like set out of the gate, ready to go. Now, doing it this way with the MSI is great if you're just working on your computer. You you know, you're a one man team, you're just like, you're only worried about yourself here, great. This is super easy, run through the MSI, this will get you taken care of, hit finish. And now if we go back and actually check that Windows Update page, Windows Update settings, come down here to advanced options again, you'll see that it automatically enabled that option for us. That is all good and great and everything, but again, it's kind of only good if you're just, you don't you don't wanna do it this way for a lot of computers, right? If you're just doing it for your own computer, great, that'll work for you. Now let's take a look at some other options that are maybe even easier. So we're gonna dive over here to Aang. We're gonna pick on Aang for a little bit. One of my favorite ways to do it if I'm just doing this for myself, like I'm working on PowerShell and I get a prompt saying, hey, there's a new version available. 
This is my preferred go-to method. So we will open up PowerShell here. I'm gonna run this as an administrator. And you'll see, it's actually gonna tell us a version. We're at 7.4.3. And if you remember, when we looked at the website, they are up to 7.4.4. And in fact, it actually gives us a reminder here saying, hey, there's a new stable release, cool. Thank you for that. But if it didn't give you that information, we can actually use winget to get that information for us. So we're gonna put in this command, winget search microsoft.powershell. We're gonna run that. You might receive a prompt here if it's kind of your first time running winget. Just go ahead and hit Y and accept the agreement there. You'll see right here, it pulled back two pieces of information for us. It actually pulled up that there is a stable version of uh, 7.4.4 available. It also pulled in the preview information. So if you're feeling spicy, you could go with the preview, but you know, I'm getting up there in years and uh, spicy doesn't agree with my stomach. With that information available though, we can use a winget command to just quickly update PowerShell for us. So we are gonna type in winget install dash dash id microsoft dot PowerShell and dot dash dash source winget, okay? There's your command right there, hit enter. You can see right here, found a version 7.4.4 and it will automatically go through the update for you. Let's watch this bad boy finish off because it should just take a few seconds. Starting install, you have the installer pop up. And this is great because you, you put in that code, you like, you, say you come into work, you see that there's a prompt, hey, there's a new version available, great. You put in that command, just have that thing memorized and run it and then it just kind of takes care of the rest for you and then you're back into PowerShell ready to go to town. Okay, I don't know if that's gonna relaunch for us, but it should be done. So we are going to relaunch it ourselves, run it as an admin. There we go. PowerShell 7.4.4. Cool. So again, this one is kind of for yourself again, right? This is like, hey, I, I need to get some work done in PowerShell. I can just run that winget command. It's going to take care of everything for me. Cool. But now we're getting into the, hey, I have multiple computers I got to update, and I don't want to go to each one of these computers running that command or manually installing an MSI. Well, we got options. We'll close out of here. We're going to pull back over here to PDQ Connect. PDQ Connect is awesome, especially if you're dealing with remote machines that you've got to update all the time. PDQ Connect is an agent-based solution, so connecting to those remote devices and updating them, deploying patches is super easy. So I'll show you what we have going on here. Now, this is gonna take a little bit of work on your end to get started at first, but once you get it done, it's like, it'll just take care of itself. It'll run the updates, do everything for you. We're talking automations. So we're gonna come here. You'll see here that I've just got a folder called Atla. Avatar The Last Airbender, if you're wondering, it is a wonderful show. You'll see that I've created a folder there. I've created a second folder, Atla PowerShell. This information isn't necessary for you guys. This is just how I like to organize my devices that I work on here in this test environment. So we've got Atla PowerShell. Now what I did here is I created several groups, okay? We've got a PowerShell installed group, which is telling me how many computers have PowerShell installed. This is PowerShell latest. This one computer has the latest version of PowerShell installed, PowerShell not installed, and then PowerShell old. And I can actually, what I'll do is I'll go through each one of these if you wanna see how I have my filters set up. So I can click on that. And this is my installed. This is just gonna show me all the computers that have PowerShell installed. You can ignore this first filter. Like I said, that's just for me, for my personal use to organize my devices a little bit better. This is the filter you want. Software name contains PowerShell. So that's just gonna return all the computers that have PowerShell installed. And then if we go to the other ones, the latest group, we'll go to the filters. It's gonna add one additional uh, filter for us. Again, you can totally remove that top filter. The ones you're worried about, software name contains PowerShell and software version contains app ver PowerShell 7. Now this is a variable, a built-in variable inside of Connect. And basically this translates to whatever the latest version of PowerShell is. So if I back out of here, go to more, variables and we'll search for that variable by typing in PowerShell. You'll see right here at ver PowerShell 7 and that is the value of that variable. So we'll go back to our devices. Here are the last two groups if you want to kind of mimic this structure. This filter right here, again, ignore the top one. Software name does not contain PowerShell. So this is devices that don't have PowerShell installed. 
And our last one, if you didn't want to do any of them, I would recommend doing this one strictly for our automation. So this is the PowerShell old. So this is finding devices that have an older version of PowerShell installed. So again, ignore the top. Software name contains PowerShell and software version is less than that variable. Again, it's less than 7.4.4 in this situation. We've gone over our group. If you'll see here, if we go to the packages, we already have a package pre-built in our package library, PowerShell 7. Look at that, already up to date, 7.4.4. That thing is ready to go. Now you could go through, click this, deploy it, and you could do all this manually, but manually sounds exhausting, and I don't got time for that. Instead, we're gonna go to an automation here. We are going to create an automation, name it uh, PowerShell 7.x. Packages, now obviously we want to add that PowerShell package to our automation here. And you'll see the version is gonna be the latest. If you click one of these other ones, this is never, it's just gonna to continue to, it's just gonna use that one version. So always just choose latest if you're wanting something to stay up to date. Now our triggers, if you wanted it to just go out like a new version of PowerShell is available for you and you just wanted it to like go out as soon as possible, you can pick the automatic trigger. As soon as that package in PDQ Connect is updated, it's gonna send all that to whatever devices you pointed it at. I kind of prefer, especially with CrowdStrike recently on the mind, I kind of prefer recurring. Uh, this way you can kind of delay the update. I don't want it that same day it's out. Maybe give me a couple days of buffer. We're going to go with recurring, deploy once. That's just like if you wanted to deploy it in the future and then not have to worry about it. Say you're going out of town or something, you could use the deploy once, but again, as it's called, it's only gonna deploy it once. Start on, we're going to, let's do it tomorrow when I'm not in the office and if it breaks, it's someone else's problem, uh, 4 p.m. Okay, right at quitting time, if something breaks, they can just ignore it until Monday. Let's just repeat this one every single week. So every Friday at 4 p.m., it's gonna say, hey, is there a new version of PowerShell available? Sweet, if there is, it's going to deploy it. If there's not one available, it'll just ignore it until the following week. Lastly, this is where that group comes into play. We'll click down here on the deploy to, and you'll see right here, we have our different groups, uh, Atla PowerShell old. So if we attach that group and we scroll down, this is going to only target those devices that are members of that group. Say a new version comes out, 7.4.5 comes out. All of a sudden, a bunch of devices are gonna join that PowerShell old group because instead of 7.4.5, they have 7.4.4. So they're gonna be automatic members of this PowerShell old, and this is gonna say, hey, any computers that are in this group are gonna receive this package, this updated PowerShell package. We can save that and that is good to go. That's ready to run. It'll run by itself, gonna start tomorrow at 4 p.m. when that new version of PowerShell comes out. If it finds any computers in this group right here, PowerShell old, Katara and Aang, they're both gonna be hit with that, uh, that deployment, okay? And uh, a good piece of advice here is always make sure that you scan your computers if you're trying to like see what information is available, it's always important to scan your devices. Just run a manual scan. That way you can see is like the most accurate up-to-date information. You don't want to, maybe these computers were scanned a couple of days ago and they shouldn't be, they should be scanned more than that. Just make sure you go in there, you have the most accurate information and you're good to go. Now, the last one that I wanna go over is you can do the same process, but if you're PDQ deploy an inventory fan, we've also got you covered there. We will go to my server here and we've got deploying inventory over here. The great thing about PDQ inventory is that we have all those groups we created in PDQ Connect, they're already here. We can go to our collection library, go to runtime, find the PowerShell runtime, PowerShell 7, it's already expanded, and you'll see PowerShell, these are all the versions, all the computers that I have that have PowerShell 7 installed. These are the ones that have the latest version. These are the ones that don't have it installed and these are the ones that have old versions of it installed. So all those same groups we've already built for you here in PDQ inventory, they basically kind of use the same uh, filters. So we don't even have to worry about that. That part of it is done. So instead, we will come over here to PDQ deploy. Currently, we don't have the package downloaded, so we're gonna start from the beginning. We're gonna to go to the package library. We've already got this filtered out. I'll pretend that we didn't. Uh, easiest way to find it is just go over here to the search field, type in PowerShell. You'll see PowerShell 7 here. Give that a check and then download that package. That's going to download to your repository. You'll see it's the latest version here, 7.4.4. It is ready to go. With that package downloaded, what we can do is create a schedule just like we did that automation in PDQ Connect. We can go to all schedules. And uh, in fact, we don't even need to go to all schedules. We can just hit new schedule. Okay, we'll give this a name. 
PowerShell 7.x. Super creative, but you know, if it's descriptive, it helps your coworkers. Again, we'll just do a weekly trigger here. Uh, Thursday, nope, I work on Thursdays. Friday, again, let's do 4 p.m. So we have our trigger set. So every, each week on Friday at 4 p.m., it's gonna kick off this automation. Now, targets, that's, that's the important one. We're gonna choose our targets. We're gonna go to PDQ inventory. We're gonna find that collection, that PowerShell collection. It can take a second for these collections to load up. Okay, once those collections load up, again, I can already see it there. Uh, it's like I've done this before. But you can just, we have the search field up there. If you want, that's usually easier to find these because we do have a bunch of collections. But we are gonna target this PowerShell 7 old collection. We got our collection added. Lastly, well, second to lastly, we're going to attach the package. So you see we have that PowerShell 7.7.4 that we just downloaded. We're going to highlight it, click the arrow to bring it over, and click OK. We've got our package, we've got our target, and we've got our trigger. The last thing I do want you to check on here is if you go to options, just make sure that this right here, this stop deploying to targets once they succeed, just make sure that's checked because what that's going to do is once a target has successfully received that PowerShell package, it's not going to worry about that target anymore. It's not going to keep redeploying that package to them. It's just going to take care of it for you. And then once a new version comes out, that any of those devices that already received that update, it's going to bring them back into the collection and it's going to say, hey, we got a new package for you. Let's send this one out. With all those settings set, we are done. We click OK and our schedule is complete. This is gonna run every week on Friday at 4 p.m. So there you go. There you have several different ways to update PowerShell. Let me know which one is your favorite. I mean, if it's just me, again, I think I kind of like the WinGet solution. It's it's super easy. Uh, I will tell you though, the WinGet solution, currently not supported on Windows Server. So if you're watching this in the future though, it might be because I think WinGet is coming on the next version of Windows Server. Uh, if you are running Windows Server and that's where you're trying to update PowerShell, then you'll want to manually go out and get the MSI and go that route. For me, in my money, if it's just my computer, then I go with uh, WinGet. If I have remote devices I need to update, I go with PDQ Connect. If I'm just worried about on-prem devices, deploy and inventory are kind of the OG and uh, yeah, I kind of like them. Again, thanks for watching everybody. If you want more PDQ content, make sure to uh, subscribe and like the content. If you want to hang out with us, comment section down below. I'm usually kind of like checking them out and replying down there. Or you can hang out with us over in our PDQ Discord server. We got really cool people over there. If you got questions about any of the processes or anything, both PDQ employees and just PDQ fans. Thanks for watching everybody. I will catch you next time.